Hi right guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I've got some behind the scenes footage to show you from a wedding I shot earlier this year of Katie and Rob. Also feel free to check out the playlist down there with all the other videos I've made regarding wedding filmmaking, tutorials, tips, tricks, all that kind of stuff. It's all down there. Otherwise, let's get into the behind the scenes. So I've popped a link to the full highlights video down in the description as well as the gear that I used uh, to film this wedding is all down there in the description. As you can see by me furiously shaking my drone in this clip, uh, the day didn't start off too well. I had a problem with my DJI app uh, flipping the screen in my phone. More on that later, I'll explain what happened there. So I went straight into filming Rob opening up some gifts from KT and I was just filming this on my gimbal 2875 millimeter Sony a7S 3 and I was just getting a few different angles a little bit of movement on each shot knowing that this will be part of a good part of the highlights I'll make sure that I get different kinds of shots him looking him looking at the pieces of paper shot with his mum so then straight after that I jumped upstairs to go and see Katie and I started filming her preps her makeup uh, for this part, I normally just use handheld um, Sony A7S III with an 85mm lens. Allows me to kind of stay a little bit far back and still making sure I get really nice, cool looking footage, especially with that 1.8 aperture. Uh, get a nice little shot of the dress again with that gimbal 2875mm setup. And also, as well as that, I got with the shoes, a nice little light from the window coming in there. After that, I just had a quick pop outside to get some uh, venue shots. So just going around with my gimbal on the 70, 17 to 28 millimeter lens from Tamron and the Sony A7S III, just getting a few different uh, shots of various parts of the venue, as well as the flowers, just quick setup of some nice flowers that they spent a lot of money on there. So I made sure I get a nice shot of that. And then I started to get a few shots of the boys arriving. They were playing a few games outside, uh, so I made sure that I just quickly nipped outside there again, staying a little bit far back, trying to document the action a bit more with the 85mm, uh, didn't want to get in too close there. And then yeah, I had some time to get a few more details because the room and everything outside was already set up, so I made sure I just kind of got that done while it was looking new and fresh. Moving straight into the ceremony, as you can see I'm catching the procession from the back and also had a camera from the front catching Rob's reaction and as you can see here James is getting his shot from the back the photographer and he obviously needs to do that to get a good shot of the bride and bridesmaids coming down the aisle but there is a way to actually get the photographer out of the shot most of the time especially if your camera is on a tripod at the back all you need to do is just find a piece of that clip uh, at the back without any photographer in place it underneath the main clip where he's actually in the shot and all you need to do is create an opacity mask in Premiere Pro on that top clip just mask around Rob the groom and it will just get rid of James that was in the background and that should work in most scenarios and it did work for me here other than that super simple setup for the ceremony just three cameras two on each side for bride and groom angles and then one just directly down the middle for a nice two shot so nothing too complicated there ceremony is done um, now we're just doing some like photos group photos which i don't really get that much of to be honest but i get a little bit of like the in-between moments but not actually the photos themselves um, i'm going to get some shots of the like the main room the decor uh, probably just get that like moving forward on a gimbal ceremony set up i had um, just two tx 650s because they had a uh, podium at the front so I just put one TX650 on there where they did the readings from and the celebrant was talking from and then also uh, just one on the groom and that worked fine uh, yeah. hopefully I'll be able to get the drone shots like the drone sorted during the dinner they're going to be sitting down soon and then the speeches are after dinner but yeah this is all a part of the wedding day things go wrong things can overrun things can nothing can be happening for a long time and then everything will happen at once so it's all part of it it's all about the result and it's all about thinking um, ahead, thinking about the edit, how it's all going to piece together. And so far I think I've got everything that I need, but obviously just halfway through the day, so let's keep going. Yeah. Hey. 
James is Mavic 3, extraordinaire. <laughs> about to do the entrance. I'm going to shoot that on 2875, um, 787 S3, gimbal. Oh, you haven't actually seen that? Okay, finally managed to get it working. Had to download an another app to make this app work, which is really weird. So if you ever have a problem with your Mavic screen, uh, like flipping, for no reason, I couldn't find anything else that would make it work other than downloading this app. I saw some, somebody recommended to download this app, which is what I did. All right, let's fly. This one's loud. Get ready for it. Oh. Cows are not happy, sheep are not happy. Uh, yeah, just wanted to get a quick uh, shot with this uh, FPV Cinewoop. Um, just didn't want to do it for too long because there's like sheep around and they got, get a bit pissed off. <laughs> Sorry, they were sleeping. And then, yeah, I feel bad, but yeah, I just wanted to get a cool shot sort of like going through the um, little gap, little gap there in the fence. Just could be something that could be cool to use in the video, like as a you know, at some point, I don't know. I like to have like options, different types of shots. So I got like a slow Mavic drone and then uh, using um, like the faster FPV. I think FPV is not really necessary for weddings to be honest, but I just do it because I, I enjoy flying. And then we have this time now where it's, uh, we just have dinner and we're just waiting for our food. So I don't mind, just do like one or two batteries. Be, uh, Good use of my time. But yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna go and have dinner now. Just gonna pack away. So again, for the ceremony, nothing too complicated. Just three cameras. I had one on a zoom lens 70 to 180 over here, catching a tight of the speech maker. Filming all of this in 25 frames per second because I don't need any slow motion here. Another angle on the bride and groom reaction and a third angle, just a wide safety at the back, catching all the action at the front uh, of the top table. I'm gonna be shooting at 1.8 outside, it's still quite bright. So I've got this uh, Polar Pro Peter McKinnon ND filter. 
and this uh, three to five stop, two to five stop. So that should be enough. Just means that I don't have to put my shot speed up too high, so I can still get like a decent amount of motion blur, which is always nice. So now I can go to one over two hundred. I think this, yeah. So for bride and groom portrait shots, I try and use my 85mm 1.8 Zeiss Batiste quite a lot just because I love the way it looks and I love the way it makes the bride and groom look as well. So I'll try and use that on a gimbal a lot. Just here getting some uh, walking backwards shots, just trying to vary it. Shooting all of this at 100 frames per second so I can get some nice slow-mos of them. Again, just walking around with them, trying to make the most of every single second that I can um, just before the light's going down. And then, yeah, just working with James just to, you know, loosen them up a little bit, get them close to each other. Just all these kind of things look really nice uh, on camera for them to look back on. Just a moment of them alone together. <laughs> cool shot. Grim, Grim's been walking towards me, cool shot. <laughs> and now the bridesmaid's turn. Got our first dance soon. First dance soon. Just getting a few shots with the bridesmaid's groomsmen. Kate Kite first dance. Had a same sort of little shot here with the, the bride and the bridesmaids because I knew that it would cut to go, cut together quite nicely in the uh, in the video and uh, yeah, they look really cool I thought. Didn't get much BTS of this part but I did catch them having a little game of tennis. That's it, just, um, just facing each other and you just have to stand still, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Just getting really close. One second. Okay. Stay there. Just going to spin around you, 360. Uh, yeah, how many times have we done this, James? Jesus Christ. So for the first dance of the dancing, I just set up my 120D Mark I uh, on a light stand quite high up just to make sure I get a little bit of a nice back edge light uh, for the dancing and first dance, uh, just to make them pop a little bit more, when, especially when you're shooting into it. I think it looks really good. Oh. I think they done. Long day, 10 hours. It was fun though. A bit stressful in the beginning, but really nice couple. Got all the shots we needed. Uh, we got some really cool little drone footage, but it was actually using James, the photographer's drone. It was really amazing because we got them to play a bit of tennis, which we've never done before. And then they were just lying down on the tennis court, like looking up and that shot looked really cool. So I think I'll try and put that in the video if uh, James sends the footage to me. So much to Polly for doing these behind the scene for me assisting me on the wedding day as well. She got a few shots and she also manned the cameras during the uh, ceremony and the speeches. And now it's time to pack up, get some KFC on the way home and uh, relax. Peace out. Bye. See you.